guys. So I brought in a little example for you. So we have three cups. One is you, the sin, and Christ. So can anyone please tell me what do you think would go into the sin cup? Mm -hmm. Lust. Lust. Very good. Anything else? Lying. Lying. Mm -hmm. Stealing. Stealing. Disobedience. Very good. Okay, so I, I wanted to um, talk about sin problem, the solution for it, and then the benefits of that solution. So if we open up to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. <coughs> it states that, do not love the world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. So we already noticed three things. Physical pleasure, uh, craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but they are from this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does not, uh, who does what pleases God will live forever. So we got three things. And if we look over to Colossians 3, 5, it also describes in depth what exactly sin is, what the problem is. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping things of this world. So let's, let's just go over it, right? So we got in 1 John, physical pleasure, um, craving for everything we see, pride, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. That's sin, right? That This is what we crave for, and that's what it's inside that cup. Um, there's other things, right, that could become sin that we talked about earlier on today, you know, like um, social media could become a sin once it becomes your idol, right? It's a good thing, but it can become a sin. Uh, porn. Uh, spreading rumors, gossiping, uh, cheating others, right, with, with the financial aspect of it. Uh, pride, not loving your brother and sister. We, we see that all the time. So that's the problem. The solution is, um, I'm going to talk about three, three ways that we can solve this problem. The first one is by reading your Bible. So if you guys open up to Psalm 119, verse 17. Anyone want to read it out loud? 17. Yeah. 119 verse 7. Sorry. 7. Yeah. 7. I apologize. I will praise you with a bright a brightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. Yes. Righteous regulations. Righteous judgments. So that's by reading the Bible. The second thing to solution we can do is by praying. So if you guys open up to Psalm 145, 18. It says, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. So the Lord is going to be there for you when you call out to him. And the third solution for this would be to, re to resist or flee from the, uh, from the fleshly lusts. Can anyone give me an example from the Bible? Very, very popular example where he literally fleed from, from that temptation, from committing sin. Satan tempted him. Do you guys remember the story of Joseph and the sexual temptations? Do you guys remember that when she literally threw herself on him? What did he do? He flee from it. And that's what the Bible calls us to. And also 1 Peter 2.11, it says, Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. And in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 13-16, through 16, it says, so prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the grace of salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. 
So basically by reading the Bible, by praying, and fleeing from these lusts and these temptations, you will receive the benefits, which is my third uh, key point. And it says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, but as it is written, that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Like the, the benefits of what the Lord has prepared for each and every single one of us is so much more worth than all of these flesh, fleshly lusts that we may face on a daily basis, you know? Even with social media, even with porn, even with gossiping, is it worth it? That's the question that we should ask ourselves at the end of the day, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Or what's waiting ahead for me, is that more valuable? Is that more important? So this little example, you, right? And when you begin to do and you choose to sin, it begins to fill you up and you begin to turn dark. But then when we pray, when we read the Bible, and when we flee from it, Jesus, he clears us out. Amen. Amen. Amen.